Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is a full review of Mr. Bojnikov's Purple Hat by the Australian House Fort at Manly. This is the bottle, it's beautiful. Uh, this is a house that took me a little while to appreciate. I was unsure on my first impression whether or not they were my taste, whether I liked them enough to want to buy them, they didn't grab me immediately. But I thought they were interesting and doing something a little bit different. And so I went back and I tested them a bit more and a bit more. And then there was a, a couple of them that I found that I really started to really enjoy. This being probably my, the most enjoyed, the one that I really liked the most. And I found myself having my hands stuck to my nose and just wanting to smell it all the time. So I ended up purchasing three, four bottles for myself. This one I've won a lot since I bought it. Um, basically since coming home from offshore, I've pretty much been wearing this one and a couple of others almost every day. So I'm really enjoying it a lot. So I should be able to give you some good idea of what to expect with this. And when you first spray it, the first note that hits me is the oud. You can immediately smell that it has a really good quality, nice, uh, complex oud. There's a lot of character there. It's a dark smelling fragrance. Also, I think one of the strongest notes in the opening is lavender. You get this hit of this beautiful oud. It's not animalic, it's not dirty, but it has character to it. It's not completely clean. There is a, a hint of a dirtiness without smelling, you know, uh, <laughs> barnyardy. It doesn't have the barnyard stuff, but it does have a character to it. But it's mixed with a lot of lavender. The lavender feels dry and herbal and crisp, like raw lavender from a field sprinkled over the oud. And then you'll get this warmth of this beautiful sweetness coming through, but it's not overly sweet, which is what I like. The balance is very good here. And the sweetness comes from cocoa mixed with vanilla to create a Belgian chocolate accord, which is beautiful mixing with the oud and the lavender. I would say it takes around 20 minutes or so for the lavender to, to dissipate as you know a top note. The heart accord is built around woods. You have obviously the oud, you've got cedar wood, you've got gayak wood, which naturally has kind of slightly smoky tones. It's, it's quite an interesting smelling uh, wood. It's a little bit more aromatic and unusual, kind of burnt characteristics to my nose, uh, cedar wood and vetiver. So you have this combination of woodiness in, in the heart of the fragrance, mixing with the melting chocolate and vanilla, which gives it a slightly gourmand touch. So this is kind of a woody gourmand but it's really tasty and it keeps me wanting to go back. From the mid of the fragrance, I would say it almost kind of, it just softens out and dries down as that. You know, you have this beautiful combination of woods and chocolate and vanilla, and it just mellows out on the skin. And this is probably, well, it is the best example I've seen or smelled of combining woods and chocolate together. I think it's, it's so good, <laughs> it really is good. And the real oud does definitely make a difference. You can smell the complexity of the oud from the opening top notes that this is, is good oud. To me, it's beautifully balanced and quite addicting. I personally consider it completely unisex, although a woman might be put off from the opening. Uh, you might struggle with it if you don't like the note of lavender just from the opening, but it does dissipate. It is a top note. It doesn't last for the whole fragrance. So people might struggle with the fragrance in the opening as the top notes. But if you let it dry down on your skin, I, I think it's quite accessible to a lot of people. I think a lot of people would really enjoy the way this smells in the dry down. It's, there's no dirty characteristics, it's just sweet, it's warm and it's woody. Um, it's pretty beautiful and quite addicting. In terms of performance for this, this one I found actually a little bit light on my skin. You know, there's some fragrance, for instance, that I only spray once, or sometimes twice at most. This one I'm quite liberal with, I've been spraying it around five times. Um, two here, two there and one there, usually is how much I spray with this one. And I find the the sillage and the projection modest. Even with five sprays, it's, it's not a loud fragrance on my skin. It's quite mellow, but I think that's not a bad thing. So in terms of performance on me, it was a little bit hard to judge because when I spray around my neck, I gauge it around four to five hours. When I have it on my hand and I can smell it properly through my hand, I'm looking more around seven to eight hours. So, you know, you're gonna have four to five hours where you might want to reapply, but it lasts as a skin scent for seven to eight. On my skin, obviously skin chemistry, 
which kind of climate you're living in is going to depend on how well this performs on you. But for me, that's what I get. And projection within the first hour, I did get noticed with this. So the projection is there, although it's one that you kind of a little bit struggle to smell yourself unless you're kind of moving around or the wind is hitting you outside. I, I don't particularly notice this when I'm wearing it too much, but other people around you do smell it. But actually this is one that I'm enjoying really a lot and it's quickly become one of my favorites in my collection. I find that I'm just kind of crave it. I, I, I look forward to wearing it and it's beautifully balanced. Um, I think this is, if you're looking for, you know, a woody gourmand, I, I don't think it gets too much better than this one. I think this is very, very well done and smells fantastic. You could wear this in multiple different occasions. Personally, I wear this casually just because I enjoy it. And I think you could wear it to a dinner date or you could wear it even in a suit, I, I don't really see too much problem because it's not overly sweet, you know, it's very nicely balanced, it's moder moderately sweet, it's not cloying, and it's not particularly dirty, apart from the initial opening with the with the oud that you can smell quite clearly. Once it dries down, it's very mellow and very enjoyable, and I really don't think you're going to offend anybody, so I think it's a pretty safe fragrance in the dry down, to be honest. So I would be happy wearing it any time, any occasion, personally but obviously it depends on preference. One thing to bear in mind that the pricing on the official website is in Australian dollars, not US dollars. Uh, I've seen that mistake being made on other channels. It translates when you convert it. At the moment, it's around, or the conversion is around 160 pounds for the 50 mil, which in US dollar is about $220, give or take a few. I did pay import tax. Another thing to bear in mind, I think I paid £24 import tax for three bottles. So bear that in mind that you might pay a little bit of import tax there as well. But also you do pay a bit of a chunk in postage. That's not their problem. <laughs> That's just what it costs to send from Australia to the UK. I don't have a problem with that. That's just literally what it is because it's dangerous goods. It's ex very expensive to ship perfume, but it is something to bear in mind. If you're gonna buy one bottle, it might be a little bit expensive once you've combined the postage and the import tax with the cost of the bottle, which is why I purchased three at once. So, um, you know, if you're outside Australia, something to think about, maybe, obviously definitely worth checking out the, the sample set. I highly recommend that because I think this is something that you can't particularly blind buy, but also I think you need to spend time with them to appreciate them. So the sample set is a very good idea because like I say, I wasn't hooked on these the very first time I smelled them. So if you're passing in a shop and you see these, you, you know, you might be missing out on something that you can really love later. So test them out on skin, sample them, and then you might get hooked on one. Like, you know, I, I, I love three of them. The second favorite of mine is Fateh Sultan Mehmed, which I've also been wearing quite a lot, which is another beautiful one. But I also bought Harim Rose, but uh, I would say Boshnikov and this one are my two favorites from the line at the moment. There's two from this house that I have not tried yet. I don't have the samples, which is uh, Suleiman Le Magnifique, and Impressions de Givigny. Those two I've not tried, so I can't comment. I think this will be one of the houses to watch uh, this year. I think they're gonna do good things. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he releases next. I think there's there's definite talent there. And you know, the good stuff there, unique, original blends that smell really good. They use good quality ingredients. The packaging is superb. And I think they're fairly priced for the product given you know, with the, with the naturals and the presentation, I think the price is completely justified. So definitely a house to watch. That's it guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again next time with another one. Take care, bye bye.